to depressing territory. 125 House Republicans, including the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, back a life at conception bill without any IVF exception. Now, this is a fairly regular thing that the GOP does. They will just like they will sponsor a bill that's the life at conception, conception bill, knowing that it has zero chance of actually passing. But just so that they can go back to their constituents and say, see, I'm so pro-life, I backed this bill. Um, but usually they carve out an IVF exception because they recognize that, like, there are a lot of pro-lifers that have used IVF to have kids. Mm -hmm. And like, yes, that is an inherently contradictory position to say, like, no, I don't believe abortion is OK, but I was OK killing a bunch of embryos so that I could have a kid. Like, that is self-contradictory, but they still have the right to not abort a child when they get pregnant and also use IVF to get pregnant, even if they have stupid opinions about it. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So uh, most House Republicans have co-sponsored uh, co a bill declaring that life begins from the moment of conception, a position that, like, we've gone over this a million times of how stupid it's that would be stupid. if it actually was enacted. And, like, the, the ridiculous problems you have like you could never send a pregnant woman to your pregnant person to prison because you are now um unlawful search and seizure 14th amendment violation i think that's the 14th um violation of the fetus because that is a person that you have now imprisoned without due process um you you can't like then pregnant people can drive in the hov lane and the carpool lane because that's two people uh dad's got to pay child support from the moment of conception good luck with that um yeah no we've we've gone over this a million times they're ridiculous repercussions if this is actually taken seriously um thankfully it does have zero chance of passing because not even all like most republicans have signed on to it but not all of them um but also not having an ivf exception you're going to alienate even your pro-life base because the majority of pro-life people are still okay with ivf for some reason i don't understand how that's possible but it's a fact for the same reason that they're okay with making uh they're okay with stripping lunches away from schools while being pro-life oh there was a quote i forget which politician it was but there was a quote from some from one of the politicians arguing against the free lunch program that went something along the lines of like our kids now have full bellies and empty souls and but like, that was how they were arguing against the free lunch thing it's like okay so you would rather they have empty bellies and empty souls like but, you can fix one of those things um, what well yeah i, I need to know who said that uh, you make me google on stream that Oh, that's a, I was going to say, that's, that's a project for the viewers, not for us. For sure, I guess it's, I, I guess it's a project for Rhino oh, now. First thing that comes up is Snopes. So Paul, uh, no, don't allow ads, just exit. Paul Ryan said free lunches give children empty souls, according, uh, apparently in 2016. Mostly false. Okay. I was, re I was, I was spreading misinformation. My apologies. What's that's true? Snopes. In March 2014 at CPAC, Paul Ryan said Obamacare uh, said of Obamacare that it offered Americans less opportunity and empty souls. Okay, so it wasn't about free school lunches; it was that free health care gives you less opportunity and empty souls. That's almost just as bad. Well, we can always default instead to the George Carlin quote: "If you're pre-born, you're loved. If you're preschool, you're fucked." Mm -hmm. Literally, if you go to Catholic church. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, sorry. And I remember when Mr. Brass tried to come out in defense of that. I don't know who Mr. Brass is, and I feel like that's a good thing. It's, uh, so the thing is, you actually do know who he is, and you've memory hold him. Uh, be happy about that. Okay. Um... So Fennec is asking, how does access to health care give you less opportunity and an empty soul? I don't know, because, like, being able to take my fucking kids to the hospital when they are sick and not have to worry about, like, what, like not keep them at home and be like, yeah, this is sick and I probably should take them to the hospital, but they'll probably be okay if I stay home because I don't have the several hundred dollars it would take to go to the hospital right now. That's pretty amazing. Um, that gives me more opportunity to, like, instead of 
like uh, spending my time nursing a child back to health, they can ha like be nursed back to health by medical professionals. And I can like, in as much as something like if, if you want to call soul, like a feeling of fulfillment or whatever, it's easier to feel fulfilled if you're not worried about your sick kid who you can't afford to get healthcare for. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to say that free healthcare actually makes it easier for you to have opportunities and fulfill your soul. That's sort of you Fennec says hundreds, like <laughs> hundreds laughs in American. Um, yeah, no, last, last I heard of average ER visit was something like $800. Um, but yeah, I do understand that it depends very much on where you are, what hospital you go to, what kind of insurance you have. Um, and there's a whole like complicated shit ton of things that go into that calculation. And I, my understanding, it was like people with good insurance is like $800. That's still too but fucking expensive. I don't know. This, these are numbers that I'm just like remembering offhand and I'm bad with numbers. So I could be completely wrong in this, but, um, it's a lot. You guys, you guys pay more per month for healthcare than I pay per year. Yeah. Like by an order of magnitude. I've been, I've been trying to figure out how the fuck we're going to get me and Saki on healthcare this upcoming year. I, and it's as far as the math checks out, it doesn't, I, I cannot see a world in which that is possible for us. And that's kind of a terrifying thought. Yeah. There's a fucking human right, man. Like, come on. Anyway, this act states that uh, the term human being includes all stages of life, including the moment of fertilization, cloning, or other moment at which individual member of the human species comes into being. I love how they include cloning in there, just as like a stopgap against the future, as if we're anywhere close to cloning humans. I mean, the it, it can't be much more complicated than cloning sheep. It is actually surprisingly um, some oh. an, some animals. Okay, um, there was a recent breakthrough in cloning, in that I want to say it was a pig survived eighteen months, and usually they only survive like six months, or something like that. Uh, I don't okay. have I don't have the details memorized, so don't quote me on this. Like, go look it up for yourself. But um, yeah, there it <laughs> it's actually um, some animals are significantly harder to clone than others, and um, the the bigger mammals like sheep and pigs and humans are some of the most difficult interesting and oh no it, was a chimp. it were... wasn't a pig it was a chimp um they cloned a chimp and it lived to three years which is not the full lifespan of a chimp but like that was a major milestone for cloning processes so like yeah we're, we're not even close to being able to test this on humans much less actually have it be a common thing but um yeah I okay know. i was i wasn't aware there were more complications involved there because my my knowledge of the cloning process is very very limited i only vaguely remember reading about it understanding like okay so there's a there's a nucleus that we need to be able to basically split and that's as far as i remember <laughs> duct tape jake says if you clone a human they won't have a soul so they won't survive it's science if you clone them and give them free healthcare, that's even worse. It's that you, their their non-existent soul will be empty. They'll die even quicker. That's also science. GOP I science. The, I I have to wonder what is the what is the over and under on a human soul in a cloned body, as far as like the religious right are concerned. Well, judging by this bill, yes, it has a soul because otherwise there'd be no reason to include them clones in the bill huh but i guarantee if you set up a situation like um like the mm -hmm. island um you know that movie that may or may not be based on a book i can't remember that had uh, ewan mcgregor and it was a scarlett johansson never seen it actually it's got sean bean in it spoiler he dies um but yeah it's, okay basically the premise is rich people will pay this company to make clones for them so that like if they ever need an organ they have a perfect donor ready to go um and they advertise to the public that like oh well the clone is kept completely unconscious through their entire life so they never experience anything much less any pain or whatever but um turns out that in reality they had um they discovered that when they kept them unconscious they didn't live for very long and so like life required 
the conscious processes in order to work. So they like had them living in this little community underground saying that the world had been destroyed in an apocalypse. Um, but there's like one spot left in the world that is the island and everybody's name is in a lottery. And if you win the lottery, you get to go to the island. But what's really happening is that when you win the lottery, that is your or the person who you are a clone of requires an organ or a tissue or something. So you now go and like, you are happy to go with the people that are taking you off and then you get killed. Okay. And, um, and so you and McGregor hmm. and Scarlett Johansson escape the island and meet their, uh, well, no, you, I don't think ScarJo meets hers, but Ewan meets his guy. And, uh, yeah, Bas it's, basically has to have a look. I understand that you're suffering, but I also deserve oh, to live. I forgot Steve Buscemi's in it, too. But, yeah, it's one of those movies that I'm pretty sure, critically speaking, they hated it, but I kind of love it. Which absolutely tracks for my taste in movies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, you're not here to watch things that are good. You're here to watch garbage that you'll remember. Yeah, no, I have not seen many movies that are critically acclaimed and that everybody it, like loves. Like uh, Terminator. I've never seen any Terminator movies. Uh, the second one was worth it. I've, so I've heard. They spelled the, Judgment it, wrong on the posters. It's so it's so weird to me because like, I, I watched Terminator 1 12 years ago. And it turned me off from watching Terminator 2 because I I thought I was going to be watching the first film in a long-running sci-fi franchise uh, that would be really interesting and explore a lot of stuff. No, no, no. What I got was a slasher film oh, where, really? where we said that the, the, the slasher was from the future, and that was, as, that was as far as it went. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm – this really kind of bored me. So. And I, everybody in chat, if you if you want a thing to to fight people on, just point out that Terminator One is a is a slasher film and not anything higher bar than that. And so. there were people that will fight you on that, but it's true. Van Briggs three 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 says the fuck is wrong with you VR? Uh, lots, there's lots wrong with me. And Donald Jaramillo says when he meets his clone, does he say hello there? <laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> God, but no, Term Terminator 2 actually gave me what I wanted from that series, uh, and I was I was happy with it. And then I was told from everybody else um, to just avoid Terminator 3. See, it I, so I avoided Alien for years because I thought it was a horror movie, and I don't like horror movies. It had always been explained to me as like a sci-fi horror movie. I'm like, well, I don't like horror, so I'm not going to like it. Mm -hmm. And then I think when, uh, when the pandemic hit and everything was shut down and everybody, like, um, suddenly you had more time to watch movies no it wasn't it wasn't even that it was um like i i think i ran across some research while i was looking something up for my channel and it was like being scared in a safe environment is actually really good for your mental health so like watching horror movies can be good for your mental health even if you fucking hate them and they scare the pants off you or whatever. That's why roller coasters are like, it's scary in a safe environment. Just don't look into how infrequently those things are inspected. Um, cause yeah, that, that's, that's a whole new kind of scary. Um, so you like, know, I was like, safe okay, environment. You know, yeah. So I was like, you know what? We're in a situation that's really bad for everybody's mental health. And I just read a thing saying that being scared while in a safe environment is really good for your mental health. So I'm going to finally watch Alien. And then it was like, I'm not really scared. This is just a good movie. Like, I, I wouldn't call it horror. But I still I mean, need to watch Alien as well. So in, in my mind, horror is more like... Maybe it's because horror nowadays is kind of pivoted towards shock value. Like, oh, look how gross we can make the thing. Oh, yeah. Whereas Alien was more about, like, the psychological aspect of it. Like, you can't really see what's going on. So, like, you, you're, like, your brain is filling in details that aren't necessarily there. And, you, like, you know you can't see. Like, so, like, is the alien there? Is it not? Is is she going to get jumped when she's trying to get the cat? Um, I mean, that's kind of like, been the... So, like, for me, when I started getting into horror stuff, Alfred Hitchcock was what I was watching. Because I was... Outside of, like... Resident Evil when I was playing horror. I played horror before okay. I watched okay. horror. 
Okay, yeah, it has the alien burst of a man's chest famously. But, like, I've seen that scene because who hasn't seen that scene? Even if you haven't seen that scene in Alien, I saw that scene in Spaceballs. Granted, it, it, doesn't, is, it doesn't start singing and dancing in Alien. It is one of the most well-known scenes of a movie of all time. Yeah, so, see, like, at that, like, when I first watched Alien, I was at a point in my life where, like, that wasn't going to scare me. Because I'd already seen it a million times. But, like, aside from that, it's mostly, like, the psychological where is the creature now mm -hmm. sort of thing. Anyway, back to these fuck... Back to the stuff that sucks. Fucking Alabama... No, it's not just Alabama anymore. It's uh, the uh, fucking House of Representatives. Uh, several healthcare providers in Alabama have already halted IVF programs in the wake of the ruling, given that IVF treatments may include the discarding of fertilized eggs, fertilized eggs which may now violate the state's wrongful death of minor act. Um, and yeah, this bill does not have a uh, IVF exception, as previous bills did in like 2017, which, oh, it's Rand Paul. Remember him? We were just talking about him. Mm. Oh, he comes up a lot of the shit like this. Um... So Johnson, Speaker of the House, one of the co-sponsors of the bill, largely controls the House floor. His evangelical Christian views has, have entailed uh, staunch opposition to abortion in the past. Um, and yeah, like that's that's what happens to the embryos that don't get used. They get aborted. Um, when a woman is pregnant, science tells us new life, she, uh, new life she carries is completely separate and fully new human being from the moment of fertilization, Johnson said during a 2021 hearing on Texas six-week abortion ban. Bullshit. Like, that's not a human being yet until it's birthed. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm... <laughs> well, personhood is not a question for science. That's a question for philosophy. It can be informed by science, but if we're informing it by science... Then let's look at the uh, areas of the brain that contain what we would call the person, the, th the areas of the brain that have your personality and your ability to process things and, and actually think. Um, those parts of the brain don't even begin forming until the third trimester. So, like, as far as I'm concerned, even if you want to be one of these people who's like, oh, well, we got to draw the line somewhere. We can't just let abortion go all the way up to the moment of birth. First off, even if you hold that position, uh, it's a matter between the pregnant person and their doctor. Like, make it all legal, because, like, anyone that gets to the third trimester, they probably want that kid, and there's probably a medical reason to uh, to have the abortion, rather than them just one day deciding, like, oh, yeah, I don't feel like having a baby anymore. Let's go kill it. Um, or the more awkward, but or there's there's two other awkward scenarios that happens there, though, that happen more often than they yeah. should. Yeah, okay, I know what <laughs> One of the one of those scenarios is there are some pregnancies where people can't tell that they're pregnant until the third trimester. It doesn't happen okay. all that. That one doesn't yeah. happen all that often. But that there are cases that of that does, happening. That does happen sometimes. Um, um, and the other one is, of course, if they're in an abusive relationship and, and there would be some side effect to a miscarriage of some variety uh, because of the abusive spouse. You have to have oh, some see. out there. I was going to see. I was going with the with the third option of um, hungry. No, a, a rape victim trying to hide the mm. fact that they're pregnant. Yep, that's another one. Like um, this, it's like you can you can wear baggy sweaters and get away for a while. Mm. Um, <laughs> but like, so but ultimately. Anyone who is in a position where, like, if, if you're one of these people is that, like, oh, yeah, it would be okay in these certain circumstances, like, if it's medically necessary or rape or incest or whatever, like, if you're one of the people that, like, yeah, I don't like abortion, but those exceptions are fine, it's still best to leave it between a doctor and their patient. Because ultimately anything else is going to result in innocent people who just needed medical care dying. It already has resulted in that. Mm -hmm. And then the 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 states that have tried to make it illegal to leave the state to get an abortion, those are the ones that confuse me more than anything, because now you're saying that human beings in the United States don't have the freedom to travel somehow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Zada Hugla 1973 has resubscribed. 
Zara Hagawa. That's the one. Yep. And and they say, oh, I'm already here. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically what it comes down to is even if you think there should be a line drawn somewhere during the pregnancy, the best course of action for everyone is to just leave it in between a doctor and their patient. Let it be a private matter between them. Don't make it illegal at all because anything else and you're going to be killing innocent people. So like, yep. Or at the very least harming innocent people. The thing that's frustrating about this kind of stuff though, and it's one of the, one of the reasons I've gotten as jaded about content on my channel as I have is sometimes I can't tell where a, a politician or a, you know, somebody like a Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro type person, I can never tell when they have the super, uh, a, uh, God, I got my brain got stopped by the text to speech from my my Blizzy. I can never tell where their opinion begins and the money they're getting paid to say what they're saying begins. I can never tell where that is. Is it is it the Republican saying the thing, or is it the lobby that knows that they're gonna have some power when the Republican gets voted in that's make that's saying the thing? And then it makes it hard to argue against people who think that people who get pregnant should not be allowed to terminate because then you start having that argument with them. And if it's a regular Joe Schmo on the street, how often has their opinion been informed by one of these people who've been paid to have this opinion and bear it? Ugh. It hurts my brain. Reploid and 404 it hurts my says uh, only opinion on this and no, I won't take argument. Fair enough. If it's not your kid, you don't get a bloody opinion. I mean, yeah. it, well, I mean, it, so I would take issue with that a little bit in the sense that, like, my opinion is that it's not my business. So, like, <laughs> does, does that count as an opinion? You are, you already have the right opinion. Like, my my opinion is leave it between the pregnant person and their doctor. That has nothing to do with me. Now, in the case of, like, a long-term relationship, I do believe there, like, if, like, I do believe there should be discussion there. It, like, either way, like, is this a baby we want? Is it a baby we don't want? That should be a discussion. And yes, both partners should have an input there. But ultimately, at the end of the day, um, it remains the person who is pregnant that gets to have veto power over the decision. Like, even if you disagree. Oh, I'd say that's a reasonable position to hold. Yeah, and I've I've uh, I've talked this over with my partner. We kind of, we I think we came at it from different perspectives, but we both ended up basically saying the same thing. Yeah, like if it's Although, if it not happens, that, not that that's even possible with my. Uh, I I seem to be impotent on purpose because I have too many kids. <laughs> you you seem to be <laughs> impotent on purpose. Well, how do you seem to be? Well, because. I haven't gotten anyone pregnant in 10 years. <laughs> no, fair, tw I suppose. 12 years. I haven't gotten anyone pregnant in 12 years. Yeah, fair. Like the, oh, the rep Reploid, is, Reploid is clarifying. The government doesn't get an opinion. Okay. That I can agree with without my little caveat there, that technically saying my opinion is it stays between the doctor and patient counts as an opinion. Um, so yeah, that one, that I fully agree with. Um, anyway, Johnson stated that he supports IVF treatment and applauded the Alabama lawmakers for moving to protect the treatment in the wake of the ruling. How How is that even a consistent position to hold? It's a baby from the moment of conception, but I'm okay with Un throwing out unless unused embryos. Somebody is, unless somebody is specifically trying to have a... Uh, I, I really don't want to use the term designer baby in this instance, but like... Well, it's not designer was... baby in the eugenic sense. It's designer baby in the sense of like looking for the healthiest embryo. Yeah. The more the most robust embryo that has the best chance of implanting and surviving. But like, listen to what he says though. I believe the life of every single child has an inestimable dignity and value. That is why I support IVF treatment, which has been a blessing for many moms and dads who have struggled with fertility. Um, so here's the. If, but wait, if hold on. If you're defining a fucking freshly fertilized blastocyst as a a child as a human life a person 
then to say every single one has inestimable dignity and value, but it's okay to discard some in this one specific scenario, that's not a consistent position. Actually, I can uh I, I have a I have a thought on that. So it's okay for them to say that an unborn fetus uh has an like one that one that may or may not be intended to go to full fruition. That one has an inestimable value. Mm -hmm. It's not inconsistent because we've already estimated the value of the IVS fe uh fetus. About thirty five thousand dollars. Oh, I see. Somebody paid for the treatment. We've already estimated the value. Oh. Rainy, I'm sincerely rain. hoping the fact that that's a joke doesn't fly over a bunch of people's heads. Uh, you know what? It flew over my head because I was reading this person who said they miss Heidi's welcome namastes. Uh, Heidi was uh, doing schoolwork or something at the beginning of the uh, stream. So what mm. was your joke? Can you repeat it again? Or is this just one I'm going to have to uh, hear when I edit and then be like, oh, I should have actually reacted to that. <laughs> somebody in my uh, somebody in my comments actually talked about the uh, the non reaction to some of the things I said. Finally, um, yeah, but... no, I, I I know that that's something that I do and I am sorry, but I have. Like... It's OK. So, no, the the joke was it's it's OK for them to hold these two positions, one that the unborn fetus in one scenario has incalculable uh, incalculable value. Oh, yeah, and while the IVF one thousand dollars. Yeah, it's about thirty five thousand dollars because we've already okay. calculated the value. I did get that joke and I did respond to it. I like I didn't guffaw. But like that's with was... reference to the story we covered the other where it's like they they're suing for thirty five thousand dollars for the wrongful death of a minor thing because the eggs that died or something. Oh, it wasn't even the specific. It wasn't even about oh. a specific. It was just about the fact that like somebody had to pay for the the IVF treatment, and therefore there was calculable value. Oh, pay for the treatment. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. That was the that was the so joke. I, I got the joke, but I I missed the in a specifics. different way. Yeah. Okay. It still worked. Um, I need to figure out why Growlithe and Chip are barking out there. One because it's ten o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. Of course his dogs are barking. That's that's the time that they have scheduled to bark. And I guess it doesn't matter whether they're inside or outside. They just need to interrupt the stream. Where's our dog? Pass, pass the dog. We can... Come here. Get him at the let puppy. You lost your phone again. Ah, I got pupper. Say hi, pupper. Well, we're waiting for Cirrus to get back from letting his dogs in or whatever. Oh, uh, Bunny Loaf 4949 is now following on Twitch. Y'all, getting the cuddles. Getting the cuddles from the puddles. The puddles cuddles. Why aren't sperm banks being protested? Well, that's because the sperm is not a fertilized egg. In order to fertilize it, you need egg and sperm. Um... But yeah, I, my understanding is sperm banks usually provide uh, material that facilitates the production of sperm for the uh, people who go in there, which uh, a lot of these uh, same people would tend to be against. Rhino's intentiveness could be another ADHD sign. I get that a lot as well. Yeah, no, I, okay. I have ADHD. So, Did you just lie to your chat? No. What do you think I lied about? It sounded like you came in and said you don't have ADHD. No, 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 no. I, um, Fusil said Rhino's intentiveness could be another ADHD sign. I get that a lot as well. Um, and yes, it, it absolutely could. Be, like I, that's, I think that's with reference to me completely missing your joke sometimes. Mm -hmm. or like things that you say that I don't respond to properly. Because like, I, I noticed that when editing. There are a lot of moments where you'll say something and it's not something I remember hearing. And I feel like I'm like, yeah, I should have responded to that. But my response to that was like, yeah, anyway, back to the story. It's just like, so yeah, I, I realize that this is a failing of mine and <laughs> this is it, an intervention rhino. And yes, it, it, that is something that happens to people with ADHD, but it's also that like, I have two chats that I'm trying to keep track of. I've got like stories that I'm keep like there's, there's lots of behind the scenes stuff going on with the stream. I'm not just sitting here, talking into the microphone with nothing else going on. Um, you still looking for your phone? Do you want me to call your phone? 
head. She every was, sperm is sacred. Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is great. If a sperm is wasted, God gets quite irate. You got it? Okay. She's got her phone. Yay. Anyway, uh, some Republicans have scrambled to declare... Just stop it, dog. I'm bumping him. <laughs> your, your dog just scrambled? Well, she was bumping into the microphone and everything. Um, I, it's, it's about the time that she gets mad at us for not going to bed. Ah. So... But we started 30 minutes late, so now she's yeah. just like... Mm. Well, she Normally, she just sits there and kind of glares at us until until we get up and look like we're going to bed. Um, but because my partner was up and around looking for her phone, she was like, oh, maybe this is a bedtime. So, yeah, she... Just like Growlithe going, it's 10 o'clock, it's time to growl. Yeah. It's time to go outside, Dad. Let me outside, Dad! Yeah, yeah Puddles likes her bedtime. And, like, it, it's so funny. Like, we, we'll go up this... When it is bedtime, she knows the word bedtime. If you say bedtime, she'll run upstairs. And then when we go upstairs, she'll be standing there with her nose at the corner of our door, just like standing there looking grumpy. And as soon as we get up to the top of the stairs, she like turns and glares at us until we open her door and she can it's get It's been time for minutes, humans. Yeah. Anyway. Some Republicans have scrambled to declare their support for IVF treatments, recognizing the unpopularity of any potential ban, despite the fact that IVF inherently includes abortions, basically. So, yeah, then we got some tweets from these Republicans. Democratic groups have quickly moved to point out the uh, their sponsorship of the bill, noting the lack of an IVF, IVF exception, because, like, that's a huge talking point for the people that are pro-life but also pro-IVF, as a bunch of these Republicans apparently are. Um, but this is one of those things where like when they started coming after Roe versus Wade, we were like, Hey, the next thing after Roe versus Wade is going to be IVF. And the next thing after that is going to be contraception. And we're already seeing both. Yep. So, and we were told for the entirety of that, or not we, as in like every liberal left-leaning person in the United States was told, no, no, no it's not going to get, it's not going to go to that. They wouldn't touch IVF. They They're not going to touch get contraception. That, no. And yeah, I, I don't know if anyone actually fell for that when people were saying, because like, surely the people saying it didn't believe it because some of them were the same ones that turned around and then proposed legislation that they promised wouldn't happen. Well, and it's, it's another one of those instances where okay. I get frustrated. Donald's clarified term for IVF. It's not technically an abortion with IVF. It would be termination, which that's. It's, That's what it's, it's. It's a very fine line, but yeah, you you are technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. No, those are the same thing. An abortion is a a, a termination is a broad category of which abortion is a specific kind. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that, I'm just assuming that there is some stipulation, the definition of abortion, that it's like ending a pregnancy. Whereas a termination is you're just terminating the fetus because if, if the fetus never makes it in, then it's never a pregnancy. So it's not technically an abortion. Actually, oh, that might made... not technically be a termination either. But I don't know. It's discarding the fetuses. Um, but I, I love the wording of the Democratic things here. Um, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee spokesperson Courtney Rice said House Republicans have made clear they will stop at nothing, including outlawing in vitro fertilization, to reach their ultimate goal, banning abortion and restricting reproductive rights nationwide. Their anti-family agenda, which elevates these dangerously out-of-touch positions into the mainstream, <laughs> will cost them their majority this fall. So I, I love that they that uh, she's phrasing this as their anti-family agenda, because all of their fucking propaganda is all about how family, family centered first. they're oriented. We are for the like, family, it's, feeding it's, the family. It's it's like they are so gung ho about presenting themselves as pro family that like it's gotten to the point where I assume that any organization that has the word family in its name anywhere is just a hate group. Well, because it, so it's a truism that often happens to be true. Like truisms have problems, but this is one that tends to be safe. Yeah. So I, I love that she's calling them out for this, being like, this is anti-family. You outlaw IVF, you are now stopping people from having families. And yeah, that's 
basically it for that one. So one more story before we get to the tweets. Um, hopefully we can get through this kind of quick. It's kind of, this is one of those stories that it's funny, but it's also not. Oh dear. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagitta, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.